Okay. Good morning, everybody. This is Bishop Richard Cox and the Reverend Gloria Wright Cox of Good the morning. Parenthood Ministries. And we're on for our Palm Sunday service. I want to thank our co-pastor, Reverend Deborah Ogletree of St. Paul Bethlehem Church for a very fine communion service this morning. And we're going to try to do that every first Sunday because people who are sick and shut in need that communion service. And we're going to try to make arrangements to do that every first Sunday uh, for St. Paul Bethlehem. We bring you greetings from our senior pastor, Dr. Betty Banner, and again from our co-pastor, Reverend Deborah Ogletree, and from our ministers at St. Paul Bethlehem, Rhonda Ogletree, Vanessa Dobbins, Mary Hope, and uh, Doris Bryant, and Minister uh, Marshall, bringing all you greetings from the deacons and the trustees and the junior deacons and the young people and the choir members and the musicians from the St. Paul Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church at 333 Crown Avenue in Trotwood, Ohio. Good morning on this Palm Sunday. We come to give God glory. We come to give God praise. We come to give God honor. And we are here, call a neighbor, call a friend, call a relative, call somebody who needs to hear a word from the Lord on this Palm Sunday as we celebrate Jesus' Passion Week, as we begin to walk with him down the Viva De La Rosa, the last steps that he took before going to the cross. So good morning, everybody. We are here with the Parenthood Ministries, and we're going to turn this part of our service over to our executive pastor of our ministry, the Reverend Gloria Wright Cox. She's going to open us up in prayer, and then she's going to sing a few selections. And there is a word from the Lord for such a time as this. Good morning, everybody. The Parenthood Ministries Prayer, Praise, and Worship Experience is now on Facebook live good, reverend cox good morning everybody i'm the camera person too so good morning to everyone we want to uh wish you a blessed palm sunday and uh we just want to go right into our service this morning we were so blessed by uh pastor uh deborah ogletree this morning with our communion service so Bless you, St. Paul. Bless you, Pastor Banner. Bless all of those that we're watching this morning. Uh, let's go to Lord in prayer. Father God, we come this morning thanking you for your goodness and your mercy. You gave us another day that uh, we can praise your holy name. We, we just lift up your name right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We glorify you, Lord Jesus. We give you honor and praise. Oh. Oh, yes, God. And Lord, we thank you, thank you, thank you for our going to sleep last night and yes. being able to get up one more day to give you the praise. Lord, we ask you to forgive us of all of our Please, sins. Jesus. Lord, continue to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, this is, we heard the message this morning that we need to repent. So we do need to repent from all of our sins. We yes. have said some things wrong. We have done some things wrong. We have just lived a messy life before you and Lord we repent of that and we want to uh, rejoice in your holy name today for this is Palm on Sunday in which we are rejoicing and celebrating that you're coming into the city and right now Lord we want you to come into our lives yes, God. come into our lives clean our lives up that we, and be a light to us throughout these mean and evil days Lord we know that death is all around us with this coronavirus but we know and we trust in you that you will see us all through this time and Lord we just praise you and honor you today yes, Lord, Lord we lift up your name on hallelujah. high we praise you we say hallelujah Thank we say you. hallelujah praise your name glory to your name you are bigger than uh, all of our problems oh magnify the Lord with me and let us rejoice Joyce. 
and be glad in it today. Lord, we thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, now it's me singing. Okay. <laughs> reach way back now I remember when I taught this song when it was in New London, Ohio <laughs> I believe and um, we've sung it in New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church in Sandusky so uh, here we go hopefully I remember all the words rejoice come on everybody rejoice
God bless you again on this Palm Sunday. I want to call your attention to the 11th chapter of Mark's Gospel. And I want to begin at verse 1. Mark chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. And when they came nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sendeth forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as ye be entered into it, ye shall find a coat tied whereon never man sat. Loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. And they went their way and found the coat tied by the door, without in a place where two ways met, and they loose him. And certain of them that stood said unto them, What do ye loosing the coat? And they said unto them, even as Jesus had commanded, and they let them go. And they brought the coat to Jesus and cast their garments on him, and he sat upon him. And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off of the trees and strewed them in the way. And they that went before and they that followed crying, saying, Hosanna. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked round about upon all things, and now the eventide was come, he went out into Bethany with the twelve. I want to talk to you this morning for a little while from the subject, don't let Jesus pass you by. Don't let Jesus pass you by. Jesus came cheerfully into Jerusalem. 
He did not sneak into the city. He did not come into the city incognito. He did not let his enemies keep him from coming to Jerusalem. He did not fear the crowds that awaited him. He did not fear the suffering that he would suffer to stop him from coming into Jerusalem. He did not come into Jerusalem riding a horse as some men commanding a big army as a war hero. He came in on a donkey. He came in on a borrowed coat. You know, when he was on the water, he was on a borrowed boat. You know, when he went to celebrate the Passover, he was at a borrowed chamber. You know, even when he died, he was in a borrowed tomb. So he comes into Jerusalem on a borrowed coat, signify meek and lowliness and humbleness as he approaches the crowd of people bringing blessings from God. And the people received him. They said, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus was bringing them blessings. They knew the kind of Savior that was coming into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. He came to identify with the left out, the locked out, the put out, the rejected, the despised, the castaways, the lonely, those who needed him the most. Jesus rides into Jerusalem on this donkey, bringing a blessing. Well, on this Palm Sunday, in the midst of this disease, this virus that's running rapid all over the world, he rides now on Palm Sunday, today, at this moment, at this time, into your house, into your neighborhood, into your city, yes, into yes, your yes, village, yes. into oh, your Lord, life, Lord. in the life of your neighbor, in the life of your co-worker, yes. in the life of Jesus. your family, in the life of your church, in your midst come Jesus. And what are you looking for? What was the crowd looking for? Were they looking for a savior? Some of them were because God knew who he was sending to the people and the people knew who they were receiving from God and that a blessing was tied up in it. And they cried, Hosanna. God made them cry, Hosanna. God made them say, Hosanna. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Can you imagine who was in that crowd? The woman at the well was there. The woman with the issue of blood was there. The man with the withered hand was in that crowd. Mary and Martha was in that crowd. Peter's mother-in-law was in that crowd. Somebody that got fed during the 5,000 was in that crowd. And God allowed them to rejoice at the Savior who raised the dead, who healed the sick, who fed the hungry, who identified with them by the master, who had compassion on the folk. They were joyfully receiving Jesus. Well, he's riding into your house today. Will you receive him? You know, you have to be kind of careful of crowds, though. Uh, and, and Jesus knew that, and he did not let the crowd stop him because he knew that God had sent him to the people but but there was some folk in that crowd who was not connected with him. Why? Because on Good Friday, they turn into a mob. Got to be careful of crowds because they can become mobs, you know. Their spirit can change so quickly, you know. <laughs> and what happened? Yes, yes. That crowd that cried Hosanna, somebody later on during the week said, crucify him. You have to be careful of crowds because uh, people will take advantage of crowds for they will take credit for things they have not done. 
You know how it is in your church. You got a few folk doing the Lord's work. You got a few folk doing the work of the Lord and the work of the ministry and a whole lot of folk criticizing. A big project happens in the church and few folks support the project. But when God gets in the midst of the few and the project is completed, here comes the crowd talking about, look what we did. He's coming into your home today. He's coming into your life today. How will you receive him? Will you say Hosanna? Will you say blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord? Or will you be a part of that Good Friday crowd that will crucify him? You know, we crucify Christ when we don't love our neighbor. We crucify God when we're mean to each other. We crucify Christ all over again when we don't show compassion to others, when we don't have compassion on elderly parents that are struggling and kids that you raise up, forget about the parents that raised them or become a burden to the parent that raised them. We have to reach out as the church. You know why God making us have church at home today on Palm Sunday? is because not only did we, as co-pastor said in her message, we don't go to his house. He wanted to come to your house. For so many houses are divided this morning because Christ is not present. So many marriages are broken this morning because Christ is not present. So many siblings are alienated from each other and families because Christ is not present. God wants you to know that you ought to come to church more than just at weddings and on Easter and Christmas and funerals, and, and, and come for special days, Mother's Day and Father's Day. He died on Calvary. He died on Calvary. And we're going to walk with him this week and talk about that experience. But today, on Palm Sunday, you ought to celebrate. Because now, you're having church at your house. Is he welcome in your house this morning? Can he sit down and sup with you? Can he be amongst your family and your friends? Can you really understand why he came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey, signifying humbleness and meekness? All oh, the lowly Jesus, the compassionate Jesus, the Jesus who pass out blessings, the Jesus who will supply your every need. I wouldn't let Jesus pass me by this morning. If you're sick, don't let him pass you by. He's a healer. If you're lonely, he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. If something is bothering you, you're depressed. He can lift your depressed state this morning. If you just need a closer walk with him, he walk with you. He'll talk with you. There's something about you that's attractive to God. And that's why he made you in his own image and in his likeness. But today on this Palm Sunday, I, I wouldn't let him pass me by. There's too many things that you need. There's desperate situation that we're facing. We just really don't know what to turn to. We can't depend on our government. They're not telling us the truth. And you know what? They don't have the answer. God has the answer. And today he wants to give you hope. Today he wants to empower you. Today he wants you to increase your faith. And he's walking down your street. He just came into your house. He's amongst your family members. He is right here present with you this morning. On this Palm Sunday, can you say Hosanna? Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus, for visiting me today and for letting me know that I'm your child. If I was a sinner this morning and I didn't know him in the free pardon of my sins, I'd want him to walk down my street. Do you remember where he found you? Do you remember when you were lost? No hat on your head, no shoes on your feet, no God on your far side, on your way to a devil's hell. But he saved you. Today, don't let him pass you by. Don't let Jesus pass you by. He wants to sup with you. He wants to be a part of your life. 
He wants to change your life. He wants to make a difference. He wants to let you know he's going to be with you even through this critical time of uncertainty that we're facing with this virus. He's going to make it all go away because you're his child. Don't let him pass you by today. The doors of the church are open. Don't let Jesus pass you by. My wife is singing, pass me not, O gentle Savior. You need to think about joining somebody's church if you don't have a church home. Come to St. Paul Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church, that hand clapping, toe tapping, tongue speaking Baptist Church, pastored by the Reverend Dr. Betty Banner, co pastored by the Reverend Deborah Ogletree. You ought to consider coming to the church of your choice this morning. Certainly, you're welcome at St. Paul 333 Crown Avenue, Dayton, Ohio. Trotwood, Ohio. The door is open. Won't you come? Let him come into your heart. Don't let him pass you by. Listen to my wife sing. The door is open. Do not pass. Do not pass me by. And I'm calling you Save hit us up on our website at www.parenthoodministries.com or our Facebook page. You can join St. Paul right in your living room and we'll see about you. We'll get your name and your phone number and your address and we'll minister to you. Amen. God bless you on this Palm Sunday. We're going to be back on on uh, Wednesday at noon, and we're going to be on at Good Friday at 5 o'clock. And on every first Sunday, we will be having communion services, and we'll be telling you more about that. St. Paul members, please pay your tithes and offerings to the church. We would appreciate it. God bless you. May God keep you. Please enjoy this Palm Sunday morning. And we'll see you again on Wednesday and again on Friday, Wednesday at noon and Friday at five o'clock for our Good Friday service. You need prayer, please hit us up at our website or on Facebook. We'll be glad to pray for you. God bless you. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you today. Amen. Bye-bye.